We just landed in Casper, Wyoming. I can hear the diesel trucks are rolling out here. We're at the Ugly Bug Fly Shop. And uh, I just can't wait to get in here and meet Blake. I've heard so much about this fly shop, so come on in. How you doing, Curtis? Blake? Good, how are you? Man. Good to finally meet you. Good, same here. Good to see you. Yeah, I've heard a lot about you, and uh, mostly good. Well, I appreciate that. <laughs> <laughs> so what's the fishing been like? It's been pretty good. Yeah, yeah we've got uh, a good week of weather, it looks like. A little overcast and kind of a typical fall condition, so we should be in good shape. Nice. nice. Yeah. And uh, going to hit the North Flat? We are. Yeah, well, yeah. we'll probably run up, uh, first of all, we'll run up towards uh, the Gray Reef stretch. Yeah. So we'll jump up uh, up below the dam there on, uh, on our ranch. And, fish some of that water to begin with. Cool. Can't wait to see Crazy Rainbow. Yeah, should be fun. Traveling the world, fishing, enjoying the great outdoors. Those are things that would have seemed impossible to me when I was a kid growing up in the mountains of West Virginia. I'm a lucky man and I never want to forget it and I'm hoping that sharing my experiences with folks will inspire them to do the same. I'm Curtis Fleming. And these are my Fly Rod Chronicles. I see a lot of places. I mean, a lot of places all over the world, but your uh, fly shop in downtown Casper is just absolutely incredible. Well, thank you so much. We yeah. appreciate that. We've, yeah. uh, we've worked hard on it. I can tell. <laughs> I can tell that. And then, so you meet a lot of your clients right here in the parking lot, and this is kind of home base, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And then, like right over our shoulders, you got another fly shop. Another, yeah, we actually call that one the Little Bug. The Little so, Bug. <laughs> yeah, the main shop downtown, the Ugly Bug, and then okay. the Little Bug out here. Nah, this place is awesome, man. I well, mean, thank you. We get, we got to see the sun come up and all that good stuff. This is, this is awesome. Should be a fun day. Yeah, yeah. You know, not only is Blake a wealth of knowledge, you know, he's fished all over the world. Um, you know, all over the West. You know, sitting around hearing stories of him when he was over in Mongolia and hearing stories when he fishes abroad. Um, he takes all that and he brings it back to Casper, Wyoming, and, and he's just like Wikipedia fly fishing. We also run a, uh, a small little destination uh, travel division here as well, and I've been fortunate enough to kind of fish uh, multiple places and all over the world. And, and definitely Casper in the uh, area here is still home and I think uh, some of the finest trout fishing in the country. I, I've been able to travel to quite a few different trout destinations as well as guide and some others and uh, it definitely keeps pulling me back and uh, you know I, I realize how fortunate we are here and how great the fishery is. Yep. There we go. Good call. Yeah. yeah. Look. Man, nice he's come right to the boat. Now he's it? up. Now he's up. Yep. Wow. Good call on that bit. Thank you, sir. Nice. <laughs> Man, they are Easy there. Easy there. They are full of it, aren't they? Yeah, they are full of it. Yeah, you're on the reel. Perfect. I guess the still not done. Yeah, I, don't, I would agree. You're set right there. Good shape. Give him a little more lift. Hand off the reel. Yep. Easy, 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 easy. Nice. Good job, Blake. <laughs> That's awesome. That's a good boat good right there. Fish. Wow. Thank you, brother. Man. Good fish. And you saw that fish over there, didn't you? Yeah, I saw him sip, How cool. sipping a merger. Wow. Nice. Nice. Wow. Awesome. So, that's Congratulations. cool, man. Good Thank fish. you. So things is heating up out here yes, on the North is. Flat. It is. So come back right after this and, and we're going to show them our setup. Are you allowed to show people your setup yes, or is it a secret? Oh, uh, we can do that. Okay. <laughs> so welcome back to Fly Rod Chronicles here with Blake out on the North Platte. This is pretty cool, huh? It is. Man. Having a good morning so far. Crazy rainbow. Yes, sir. It is truly crazy, <laughs> isn't it? Uh, so the hookup here. Yeah. So you're, you're, we're, we're nymphing. 
and using an indicator. And, and you, you got you got three little boogers on there, don't yeah, you? We do, yeah. Uh, we have uh, three little flies. So we kind of have a, a little smorgasbord this morning. We've got a little blue wing uh, emerger on the on the very front there. All right. And then uh, in your right hand there is a little epoxy back uh, blue wing. All right. And then this bottom fly is called a purple haze. It's a little soft tackle. Gotcha. gotcha. Yeah. Very cool. Very so cool. Uh, we got a, a couple of blue wings and a little midge on the bottom end. That's pretty cool. You know, our uh, our field producer, he loves those smorgasbords. This morning he had eggs, sausage, biscuit, <laughs> biscuit and gravy, orange juice, coffee. So that's kind of what we're doing here. I right understand. Yeah. I understand. Yeah. I'm kind of the same way. I, I hear you. <laughs> when I travel, people ask me, what's the biggest fish you caught? Um, what's the greatest place you fish? And it's always, what is that strongest fish? These fish out here on the North Platte are maybe the most psychotic, the most craziest fish that I've ever hooked. When you sink a hook in a fish's mouth out here, they go absolutely crazy. It's like that they are on crack cocaine. They flip out. I mean, every scale is moving, their tails, their fins, they completely go nuts. It's no wonder that Blake calls his place Crazy Rainbow because these fish absolutely go crazy. That should be one. Yep, nice. Nice, nice. Oh man, <laughs> that thing is on fire. <laughs> Golly, he is angry, <laughs> mad. And like, how could you come out here from West Virginia and stick me and make me look so bad? Wow, and he's out. Guide release. That's I like it. it. Let me uh, steal it. your fly real quick and take a quick peek. Yeah. The one thing that I was questioning myself as an angler was, why am I not keeping these fish on? I, I, I don't ever, ever remember losing fish like this. But when we come back and look at footage in the evenings and we start, you know, having dialogue, it's because these fish are so crazy. Now. We're using a lot of scuds. We're using a lot of very small, minute flies. Um, I'm sure that's got something to do with it, but I think it's mainly because these fish, as soon as you get them, they either go airborne or they're going down, they're trying to bulldog, they're trying to get into the weeds, getting into the rocks, into the trees, the debris, and they're just trying to shake you. It can be aggravating a little bit at times because the number of fish that you do lose because they fight so hard. You'll You'll see, uh, you know, throughout the week, a lot of the fish we hook, they're going airborne, they're shaking their heads, they're spinning, they're circling. Um, they go nuts and, and, you know, right now they're, they're eating midges and they're eating little blue wings, so uh, your landing ratio just isn't gonna be great. But that's, that's also part of the fun. Um, you know, we, we enjoy the fact that sometimes you just kind of tip, tip your cap to the fish that they did a good job and were able to, to get away from you. Uh, we, we like to see them for sure, we like to, to land them, but uh, all the same, the experience is a, a unique thing, and uh, you know, we have really hard fighting fish, so it makes for a lot of fun. Ooh, he does it. Man, oh man, these fish are <laughs> plain just angry, bitter. <laughs> I mean, God, like, a, like an ex-white, you know what I mean? <laughs> just, just nasty, I mean, like, like Judge Judy ex-wife <laughs> stuff, you know what I mean? These fish are bitter. Look at it, look at it. I'm telling you right now, you cannot have this much fun without going to jail, not that we've <laughs> ever been to jail lately. Golly. Look at this thing, it's nuts. He just can't make his mind up. And you know I have to pop three Prozac if I lose this fish. <laughs> oh yeah. Pretty. Gorgeous, huh? Oh yeah. <laughs> How cool is that, huh? It's gonna be a Bengay night tonight. <laughs> My arm hurts. Chunker. That's what I meant. <laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna have like another protein bar. We'll take a little commercial <laughs> and uh We'll come back right after this. More Fly Rod Chronicles out here with our main guy, Blake. 
Closed captioning is provided to you by Buff, the original multifunctional headwear. So Blake out here on the North Platte, I mean, you know, we travel all over and we love conservation. We love to see the different projects. You guys got something a little different going on out here, don't you? Yeah, we do, uh, or the Game and Fish and the uh, Bureau here does a flushing flow in the spring to help us with our uh, spawning habitat, uh, sediment removal, that sort of thing. It's a neat deal. It's Westervelt Ecological Services, time for conservation. Explain what the flushing system, what, how, how it works. Yeah, basically it's a, uh, a you know, man-created flood, right? So every night uh, they start stair-stepping it up and they'll bring a river, you know, currently we're at 500 and that time of year in the spring we're at 500 CFS. So they'll run it from 500 CFS up to four or 5,000 CFS is on a stair-step as they come up. Mm -hmm. And then they'll do the same thing on the way down. So it, takes all the debris and sediment and then uh, kind of scours the rocks, cleans the habitat, and then, you know, they drop the river back down, it brings the de debris back to the middle, and they'll do that for 10 consecutive days. So at the end of it, it's kind of a, a light switch for the fish to start spawning. They've got great gravel and uh, definitely makes their uh, reproduction uh, much more uh, um, promising every year, right? Yeah. They have much better success rates. Hmm. That's pretty cool because, uh, I mean, you know, back home and in a lot of places we rely on floods you know floods can be a good thing yeah yeah totally and a lot of people kind of forget that and, and often you know in a in a fishery like this where we're a, a uh, tailwater below multiple dams um, we've kind of taken that element out of it right so right. To, to add that back in it's a controlled release but it definitely it definitely helps with our spawn it's a huge deal and, and often uh, is a great thing for the fishermen as well less yeah. river debris less moss it cleans everything up. Like less snags for me. Yeah, exactly. More. <laughs> you know, the fish blow the dam. Um, that was one of my big fish. It's one of those fish that goes in the memory bank. Good fish. Oh, big daddy. Big fish. Perfect. Nice. Yeah, yeah. good, Curtis. That's a great first fish. Sliding at you nice and easy. There you go. Perfect. Nice, great first fish. That's good right there. Yeah. He's gonna put a run on you here, yeah. I bet. I feel it coming. Oh man. Yeah, now he knows he's hooked. Look at him. He's shaking, going crazy. He is going Trying crazy. to get those rocks. Yeah. Yeah, nice and easy, no rush. We're in good shape now. We're wow. Out here in the big water. Look at that. Absolutely just going crazy. Oh, man, what a great fish. I mean, he was up at the head of that. that that's, I mean, that's spawning territory there. He was right at the drop, yeah. Look at this cat. I'm just going to try to keep the beak yep. to him. He's good right there. Just kind of keep angled right up over my head. He should boil here right for us. Yep, good angle, perfect. Nice easy lift, one more little lift, and off the reel. Yes sir! Whoa, man, that is so cool. Oh man. Awesome. Thank you brother. Good work. Yes. Good work. That is so cool. What a great fish. Good fish, Curtis. Yes. Good fish. Thank you, Blake. Put him back to... We'll let him, we'll let him uh, get going here. See you, bud. Let him do his thing, huh? Awesome. How cool, man. <laughs> awesome. Good work. You know, it's apparent that the flushing is working here on the North Platte River. Not only did I catch some big fish, but I caught several little fish. So that is a sign that it's working and that it is a productive river. Yep. There we go. Oh, heads up. <laughs> he caught it. Caught it. In it. Oh. oh, that's awesome. You know, when you're nymph fishing, you're watching your line. It's about line control. It's about watching that indicator. You're intense. You're leaned over. And man, when I saw that thing move and I locked into it, 
and it came back and hit me in the chest and I got guys down here laughing at me and laughing at I just like wanted to crawl under the boat. The best jump of the trip though. I mean, he had, to, he had to go at least 15 feet. <laughs> <laughs> I've got to get there in one way or another. I'm a fishing bum. We often get customers that uh, don't necessarily plan on fishing when they come here. They come here, they, they figure out how great the fishing is, or, or they just don't want to travel with it. And, and we do provide them from, you know, everything from A to Z. Uh, often, uh, you know, we provide rods and reels and bugs and leaders and all that as part of our uh, outfitting uh, charges for, for float trips, but uh, we can really outfit you, you know, walk in on your street clothes and, and we can uh, make you look the part and, uh, and act the part within hours. And then we um, have uh, Crazy Rainbow Lodge and uh, Crazy Rainbow River Cabin, so we're, we're able to house up to 12 guests. Uh, we have a full-time cook on staff that can accommodate uh, just about anything that the guests can imagine, so we do a little bit of everything here. We're up here at the Miracle Mile. This is where Kirk Gowdy used to come back in the day. I mean, it is an unbelievable stretch of water. And it's one of those places that you want to check off your bucket list, the Miracle Mile up here in Wyoming. You know, the Miracle Mile has been a, uh, a legendary fishery for years. It's kind of went through its tough times and then is uh, kind of on its way back now. So uh, we're doing more and more at the mile. Uh, the mile is, is by no means a numbers game. It's a little more quality and um, the experience of the mile. It's uh, a lot of places that our grandfathers uh, have fished or, or we used to hear about uh, years ago. So, uh, you know, the mile's a beautiful, beautiful place, kind of a gorgeous setting right at the base of the Seminole Range and, uh, you know, a little different water from the reef. It's a little more pocket water, reef or water, uh, kind of big boulder gardens and some um, very quality wade fishing. So it can be fun at times. It can be definitely a little more finicky than the reef, but, but an awful lot of fun to fish. A lot of scuds in here. You'll see them cruising around. They're all over the place. Yeah, go on. Lots of scuds, lots of caddis, and a fair bit of stone flies up here at the Miracle Mile. Nice. You know, when you fish a place like the Miracle Mile, our guy Jesse, he told us, he said, you may not yield as many fish as you are further downstream, but more than likely, you're gonna yield a couple good ones. Uh, to me, the Miracle Mile, that's, that's just a really special place. It's one of my favorite pieces of water. Um, it's, uh, it's a tailwater that fish is more like a free stone, and I won't lie, it can, it can hand you your butt some days, but the quality of fish we see out of there and um, the scenery, you're not going to find anything like that any place else. But the consistency of big, healthy, hard-fighting fish, that's what keeps you going back. And every time you hit the water there, you have it in the back of your head that today might be the day where we get the, the real dinosaur. I was fortunate enough to hook in to one of them big bows, and it was an experience of a lifetime. It's a really good fish, too. Oh, he's stripping me. Good. Turn at you. Good. I'm gonna lay the ditch to him, baby. Going at you nice and easy, Curtis. Oh, yeah. Nice. Nice. Nice, baby. Nice. Oh, I love that sound. <laughs> That's my favorite sound in the world. Oh, come on. Now he's coming to me. Oh, wait a minute. No, you don't. He tried to, he tried to school me. Now he's going down. So this is why they call it the Miracle Mile, huh? <laughs> yeah. Now he's going under the boat. I'm going to just try to raise him as high as I can. Yeah, you're good. Go ahead and reel down just a hair more. Look at this guy, baby. Oh my gosh. Oh, we got to land this fish. Yeah. We got to land Easy this fish. Easy does it. Easy does it. We got to land this fish. We got to land this fish. Give it to me, man. I like it. God, I, like I love it. it. <laughs> that is so cool. The collars on this thing is absolutely outrageous. It's ridiculous. Dang, go on. Curtis is uh, super jazzed and, and you know, very enthusiastic, which which makes it a lot of fun for us. Jess, I get I get a little little jacked when I catch a big fish. 
it was a, uh, a great fish and I think something that, that uh, the both of us will never forget. I'm telling you, we fished all over the world, but to see the markings on this thing on the Miracle Mile out here in Casper, Wyoming, this, this is absolutely crazy. It's a gorgeous fish, isn't it? It it's is. Awesome. Man, you guys do an incredible job at the Crazy Rainbow and Ugly Bug Fly Shop, Thank man. Thank you, sir. I appreciate, sure appreciate you having it. us. And, and um, you know, this is how we're going to end the show. We're going we're to let her swim off. It's time for Trout Unlimited's Release of the Week. Awesome fish. Thank Congratulations, you. Congratulations, Chris. Yep. Come back next week for more Fly Rod Chronicles. In the cool of the evening as the sun